Hi, and uh, welcome to this first in the series of sorting algorithms. Uh, today we're going to be talking about bubble sort. Before we begin, I just want to let you know that this is designed for anyone learning GCSE level computer science at secondary school or people who are new to the concept of sorting algorithms and programming. It's not designed for uh, experienced programmers and this can be used as a teaching or revision resource and it can be used either, feel free to use it with your class or to give it them for homework. So we're going to be looking at bubble sort today but in the future we'll be looking at insert and merge sort and hopefully by the end of this lesson you'll be able to at least describe how this sorting algorithm works either as a flowchart or pseudocode and be able to write some code hopefully to execute and I'll be using Python to do that so if you're a Python programmer this is for you so um, why do we sort? We sort them because arrays are better uh, if they're sorted because it's easy to find items in them. There's lots of sorting methods. Um, I'm going to be talking about three. Bubble sort is the first. The great thing about bubble sort is it's a very easy to understand algorithm. Uh, it's easy to code and create flowcharts, uh, which makes it great for beginners. Um, it's the first one I learned to do. And, of course, it is the most efficient uh, sorting method for any list that's only got two items in it. However, it's very inefficient for sorting longer lists. And if you double the length of uh, an array, uh, it will typically take about four times as long to, to sort with a bubble sort. So how does bubble sort work? Well, basically, this is the uh, flowchart for any given uh, list of items. We start by, we go to the beginning of the, the list and we look at the first two items in the list and we ask the question is the first item greater than the second item and if it is we swap them around and if it's not we do nothing and then we say well have we checked every item in the list and if we've not we go and we get the next pair and so on until we've looked at the whole list um, what we then do is we ask ourselves the question when we've got to the end of the list, we say, did I make any swaps? Uh, if we made swaps, that must mean that the list isn't sorted yet. So that means we go right back to the beginning of the algorithm, back to the start of the list and go through that procedure of comparing pairs and swapping pairs if we need to. Once we get to the stage where we haven't made any swaps, we effectively have sorted all the items in the list. So what does this look like as a pseudocode algorithm? So we're, I'll leave this up on the screen for a few seconds. You can just pause. I'll leave you to uh, read the uh, description. OK, so uh, we really want to learn how to do this in Python. So let's, uh, let's do it in Python. So. So what we have here is the bubble sort in Python, and we we can first of all we'll demonstrate it working. So we've got a, a list of numbers here which is uh, deliberately um, in the wrong order, and uh, we are going to run the program. So as you'll see, in this case we begin with the unsorted array, and then at the end of the program it churns out the sorted array. So we can kind of, uh, by adding a, a print statement at the right moment, we can see what's going on. So I've just added these two lines of code here. So we can, at the end of each uh, pass, it will print out the list and then pause. So we've got time to see what's happening. OK, so. If you see on the first pass, the, the, the highest number, which is 213, at the end of the first pass, that's been pushed to the top. So we can see what's happened is the first two numbers are being compared, and they've swapped those first two numbers, so the 8 ends up here, and the 9 would have been kind of here. But then, of course, the next number was 7, so 9 is greater than 7. So 9 being the bigger number is pushed all the way uh, up the list. Okay. Uh, but the list is still not sorted, so when we have to go through a number of steps, and as we can see, the the smaller numbers are being pushed to the left, as the bigger numbers 
work their way to the right. And eventually we get the sorted list. Now it's interesting to note that at this point the list is already sorted but because the uh, algorithm has needed to make a swap it, it assumes it's not so it has to do another pass to check that the list is sorted and it's gone through and done a pass realize it hasn't made swaps and then it's stopped. Now we can break this down a little bit further I can just copy those two lines of code and I can stick them inside the uh, this loop here And we'll, uh, what we'll be able to see is the individual process of uh, each individual number being, being uh, sorted. So we can literally see the, uh, the number 9 being pushed up the list each time we iterate through. And when it reaches this point, the the numbers, the, the items number nine and, and and two one three are now are sorted. So it doesn't swap them, but it it now it's now going to move the uh, two one three and it's going to start pushing that to the end of the list. Can you see that? So you can see that those numbers have now worked worked the way through, and of course. Um, I won't, I won't do the whole thing. So if you wanted to kind of see what's happening if you were teaching this and you wanted to uh, explain to, to, to kids what was what was going on, you might want to just put a couple of lines of code in like so, just to show what was happening. Okay, so uh, let's see how this works. So of course we've declared our uh, array, which we've called numList here. And um, you, you can do a little algorithm to just populate an array with random numbers which is good if you're testing your sorting algorithm with larger lists and then I've uh, identified the variable list len which is just the length of my list minus one Now the reason it's minus one is because when we compare the first pair of numbers and the second pair and so on when we get to the last pair what we don't want to be doing is asking the computer to compare this item and the one to the right of it because what we'll do is we'll have a an overflow error essentially we're, we're, we're looking for a, an item that's not there so there's no item to the right of that number so we, uh, we we stop we stop at this point basically and that's the pair we compare so that's why it's len numberless minus one and obviously then I'm outputting the uh, the list so we can see what it looks like before it's sorted Okay, now we're entering a, a while true loop. So this is going to loop until um, I, I tell it to break. Essentially, it's a forever loop. And at this point, I assign the variable swaps, which I set to a Boolean value of false. And we assume uh, at the beginning of our, um, our first loop that the, the list is going to be sorted. So we set that to false. And then we... Are going to repeat this is the process now where we're going to compare adjacent pairs and we repeat this for if there are 10 items in the list we will we'll repeat it nine times and if there's 20 items in the list we'll repeat it 19 times so we ask the question using an if statement if the if the item in the list so the first item which is we'll say is item zero is greater than the item that uh, supersedes it then we assign the value of temp to this value and then we we take this value and we put it here and then we take the temporary value and we put it there so essentially that's the this is the little bit of code here that that swaps this is the bit that says do they need to be swapped and this bit of code here is the bit that actually does the swapping and if, of course, we've made a swap, we then need to set the uh, Boolean variable of swaps to true because we have made a swap. So we've effectively now what's happened is we've actually checked the whole of the list. By the time it's done this for loop, it's checked everything item in the list at least once. And 
then it asks the question well did we make swap did we make swap so if swaps is uh, if swaps is false in other words we didn't make any swaps then we're going to break out of this loop and that means the it's sorted and we there we go okay if obviously we didn't then we need to go through this loop all, all over again now I've also got this line of code in here that says list len um, minus equals one. Uh, let me explain why this is happening. I'm just going to run this code again with with this showing. Okay. So what we'll see when we run the code is that the first time it loops, we we get our biggest number is now sorted. So and and then the next on the next iteration, subsequent iterations, our, our, our biggest numbers are are already sorted. So there is no point in going through the list and then checking these two and these two and these two and then checking these as well because we know that these items must be sorted. So what we actually do is each time we iterate through the program we're only checking the items that we haven't sorted we're not actually there's no need to check items that are already sorted so effectively the the more times we've looped through the fewer items we, we need to check so in theory uh, at least this this little bit of code here just reduces the amount of time it, it takes to uh, sort uh, with a bubble sort that's essentially why that's there. It will work perfectly well without that line of code there. Okay, it will still work, except what it's done this time is it's 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 checked every single item in the list every single time it's looped through. So it's slightly less efficient. Okay, so that's pretty much uh, how you do uh, bubble sort in Python. Um, I'll leave that up on the screen for a few seconds or you can hit the pause button if you need to make a copy of it. So, this is a copy of the code. Um, now, I would suggest students could practice the bubble sort algorithm by sorting numbered cards or objects or they could act it out. Um, you've got one pupil who's in charge, if you like, doing the explaining what the algorithm is and the other students acting it out. Um, you could ask people to draw a flowchart or write some pseudocode for a bubble sort. Um, or you might ask them to independently code it. Um, now, you can use any programming language that you like. The algorithm will be no different. Um, it will just be in a different programming language. Now, what you can also do is a, as an add-on, is you could do a little bit of code that creates um, a, a list randomly at the beginning of before the sort um, and you can populate it with um, you know a large number of numbers so you can time how long it takes or you could use the time function in python to uh, set a create a start time and an end time for the algorithm and then calculate the elapsed time um, for different lengths of list and then you can get an indication of how efficient the list is for um, bigger or smaller numbers of items. Anyway, I hope you found this uh, video interesting and uh, if you have any questions please feel free to uh, contact me uh, the usual method. Uh, next lesson I'll be doing will be insert sort. So um, thanks everyone for watching and I hope you've enjoyed this video.